Hey guys, Dre Avin here with Raquel Miller. She is a World Boxing Association champion. She's 10 and 0, undefeated, four knockouts. They call her the pretty beast because she throws down. She is really doing big things in the boxing world right now and so much more to come. So I'm so excited that she's here. And another thing I'm excited about is the Bovada brand. So make sure you check out www.bovada.lv. Check them out, play, and raise your game. So Raquel, what's up, girl? What's up? I am so glad you're here. I'm, I'm so excited. Happy. I want to let everyone know you drove an hour and a half to be I here. I did. I did. And I'm just... Only for you. I know. I am just super Only for pumped you. about that because I just feel honored that you, you made time for me. We're doing a little late night interview. That's yes. a big reason why I love having my own production company because we can shoot interviews anytime, anywhere. So I'm just yes. grateful that you are here. So Thank you. Raquel, what I love about your story is your progression. I mean, you started working at a law firm in San Francisco. I did. And you were doing that. And then something inside you just said, you know what? I know I'm meant for something else. And that something else is boxing. Yes. Talk to me about that progression, just going from a law clerk life to where you're at now. How did that happen for you just over time like that? I honestly feel like for me, mm -hmm it was always something that was inside of me nagging me. Like you have yeah. to get back to it. Like, of course I've, you know, had a lot of fighting and things like that growing up. Yeah. But when I was kind of working at the law firm, I just felt like my purpose is bigger than this. Yeah. Like and this you just is know. cool, but <laughs> this is my purpose all, but... is bigger than that. Right. And then also it was like, I had gained some weight and I was just wasn't happy with that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. And really it wasn't even to box for this long. It was just to lose weight and to have a fight. Right. And I lost 50 pounds. Wow, you um, lost 50 pounds. I lost 50 pounds. Amazing. Yes, so it was kind fight. of like a blessing to have to be on that weight loss journey. And then that was part of fighting as well. Well, no, the weight loss journey, what the weight loss journey was taking me, I already knew that's what I had to do right, to fight. For fight, and, right. Because um, you got to be a certain weight. Yeah, you got to be a certain weight. I right. had surgery on my foot. So I had, um, you know, I was kind of like, I wasn't mobile for a while. So that was like, you know what? This is what better time than now. Wow. So, you know, and, and that took me to my first And fight. look where you are. Yes. I mean, here we are. We're undefeated. And you're known for your speed and your movement. And I know you train for about three to six hours every day. What is it in your training regimen that you feel really brings that out to the top level? Because people say, hey, when we think of Raquel Miller, these are her strengths. When you train, what is it that you do that really helps raise that to the highest level? I like to think that every time I train, I'm trying to give it everything I got, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm trying to work on my weaknesses. I'm trying to push myself because it's not always easy to be super motivated. Right. But that's when the discipline comes in that. That's right. when the routine comes into play. So for me, I think that routine sets up progression. Mm -hmm. and oh, I, think I like it, that routine sets up progression. It does. And I think that that is really what's gotten me to the next level. That's what helped me really sharpen my tools. And I think mm -hmm. that's what keeps me you know, growing and getting better. Right, right. Well, I know that you also used to street fight as a kid around the area that you grew up. You know, we got to protect ourselves on these streets. We do. So I, I, I know that you were doing that. What was it about the street fighting aspect that helped you now as a controlled professional fighter? So doing all that brawling on the street, what did you take from that that now has helped you excel as a, you know, this is your job now? I think that for me personally, it just taught me that you know, I'm a fighter to the core. Right. You know, I always <laughs> fight for what I believe in. Right. In the streets, in the ring, for my dreams, for my goals. Um, fight all the way around. You, you got to fight. fight for what you want. And, and I'm not advising anybody to go and street right. fight, but protect <laughs> right. yourself at all times. Right, right. But, but I just feel like that really transitioned into me letting me know that, you know, my spirit is a fighting spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to test myself to change a negative to a positive. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start boxing because I was tired of being known as a street fighter. Right. Oh, like, okay. So know, it was like wanting to be known as a different type of yeah, fighter. Yeah. And wanting to just really change a negative to a positive, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, it's really easy to be a street fighter. They street, you know, street fighting is like, you know, 30 seconds of fighting. And, right. You know, it's just, it's just not it. But I really just wanted to challenge myself to the next level. Right. And I felt like, let's see if you're really good. Good. Right. You know, let's see how bad you really are. And that was really just kind of like a mental thing for me. I wanted to prove that I was better than a street fighter. Right. And I think obviously your results have yes, shown, yes. you know, where you're at right now, you've shown that you've definitely done that. What I love about you and what we've talked about is just your drive and how you're motivated by when people say you can't do something or I don't think you can do something. And that's what motivates me as well. 
What's your advice for someone watching that may want to chase a dream, whether it's fighting or whatever it may be, to persevere through that and just to use like the negativity or the haters as fuel to get to where you need to go? Because that's a big part of why we're at where we're at, we're at right exactly. now. Exactly. I really feel like write down your goals, mm -hmm. write down, write down your routine, and really I tell that. yourself that no matter what comes my way, no matter when it gets hard, when it gets challenging, when right. the tears come. This is my goal. I'm sticking to it. And no matter what, this is what I'm going to do. Right. You know, and I'm you have never going to gonna surrender, exactly. never quit. You got to block out the noise. Right. Because there's going to be a lot of noise. There's going to be a lot of naysayers. There's going to be a lot of people that try to put their opinion on you. On you. Yep. And you know, you have to tell them that's cool for you, but this is my life and it's free for me to live it how I choose to. Okay. Boom. You know, and I think that that's really been my biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And like I said, when I was talking to you, I see a lot of how I've chase my dream, the same parallels yeah. to how you've chased your dream. And you've got another big milestone coming up in December. I do. So tell me about that. I am very, very excited. Yeah. Um, I will be officially fighting for a world title. Yes. Um, it's amazing. And I just really want to share my journey with you and with everyone else. Mm -hmm. It's been a very trying 10 years. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of ups and downs. It's yeah. Been a lot of tears and you know, frustrations. And it just goes to show you that everything is full circle. Yep. Ironically, my title fight is on the 10 year anniversary of my first amateur fight. Oh my God. So that's like, that's the story right there. Yeah, like Little pegs in the how, journey. How special is that? That it yes. comes full circle and 10 years later that I'm having my first pro, I mean, my first world title fight on the same day. I love so, it. I'm so I'm excited. very, very excited. Yeah, well, you've done so many great things, Raquel. And Thank something you. else that I love about you is you're a businesswoman like me. You have Absolutely. your own clothing line. I do. I want to find out about it. I'm gonna have to get hooked up. With, I catch. I saw. I looked. At, I saw some cute things even before you got to my place today. So I'm definitely supporting you. And I just, you know, I want everyone to know about what you're doing with it and Thank why you. you decided to choose a clothing line. Because a lot of different athletes I know have different businesses that vary. Why specifically clothing and let everybody know what the name of your line is and where yes. they can find it. Let's so, talk that out. Yes. So the name of my line is the PB brand. Mm -hmm. It stems from my nickname. Pretty Beast. Pretty Beast. Pretty Beast. And the PB brand really just represents going for what you want, okay. believing in yourself and looking like you good are. in the like process. Like you what embodies you. And initially what happened is I started the brand because I remember feeling like I really wanted to be picked up by a Puma or athlete or a Nike or a, you know, Athleta or someone. And then I just realized, you know what? You don't need anyone to validate you. You yeah. can validate yourself. Like I work my butt off day in and day out so I can start something that represents me. Yeah. That represents hard work, that represents, you know, looking good and feeling good, doing good, but working your butt off. Or, right. You so know, it's the like, perfect combination of, yeah. it really represents like it, everything that you bring to the table in the clothing line. So you took everything yeah. that you embody and put it into that. Exactly. And so I just felt like the real mission behind the, the brand is to say, you know, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. You can look good, but you can also be a beast and don't allow someone to put you in their box. Yes. So, I never did that. I, I remember people kind of were like, oh, I don't know if you should start your own company, but we have 9 million views. So, you know, I never listened to exactly. what anyone says at that point. So that's where me and you are definitely on the same page. Yeah. All right, well, great Like you're a pretty beast. So oh, you, you have to represent You know what I love about, you know? I want to tell everybody about Raquel. So me and Raquel were like messaging and like texting and emailing me about this interview. Yeah. And she just kept calling me queen. And she yeah. was like, I was like, so what time, you know, and she's like, closer to eight o'clock, queen. I'll see you later, queen. I was like, oh my God, you're so cute. I, it's so cute. I just like thought that was so touching that every little thing, I'm like, you're the queen. Like you're the boxing we're champion. And it was just so cute. So I just love that you're so uplifting to like Thank other you. women. And that's something that we need more of. We need more women to uplift women. We do. Yeah. I just think that like when you, you know, when you, come from a place of positivity when you just want to radiate positive vibes and good energy when you show love love comes back to you so I you know it. like I love to see women doing their thing I'm proud of you that's why I drove out here to come and be a part of your show because I you know I respect dope women yeah you know, I respect queens when you're doing your things you can't do nothing but salute each other and support each other and that's why we're here that's why we're here and most yes. definitely Raquel is a queen of the highest caliber and I'm so excited Thank you for the three minute play with DA, you guys love this segment, rapid fire questions showing you more about your favorite athletes off the NFL football field, off the baseball field, off the soccer field, outside the boxing ring. So we like to peel back the layers. I have a huge personality. So we like to see more about our favorite athletes and their personality. So Raquel, yeah. you ready? 
I'm ready. All Let's right. Go. All right, Raquel. So you were a USA national boxing champion. Yes. What about that title gives you the most pride? Not many people can say that they're a champion of their country. What does that mean to you? For me, it means that I represent everybody. Um, and that, you know, I represent everybody. <laughs> When you go out, when you represent the country and you go somewhere else and you got it on your back, it's a different type of representation. Right. And you're representing, you know, everything that you stand for, your people, your family, your friends. And I just think it's a great sense of pride for me. Right. I thought something was so interesting. I know that your mom wasn't a huge fan initially of you becoming a boxer, but I know she's so proud of you. So what was a moment that really stood out to you where your mom was just like, girl, you really did that. You did your thing. What was a moment where you were just touched by your mom's support, knowing that, you know what, she wasn't 100% down with this, but she, she rode with you. When you reach the mountaintop, she's there. Yes. So first things first, my mom is my baby. Yeah. Um, she yes. doesn't like that I box steel, but I think that right. one thing that really kind of cemented my journey when she called me one day and she said, you know that I hate that you box but I want to tell you that you've inspired me so much. You know, you're braver than I can ever be, but I'm really proud of you and I'm really thankful that I've had you because oh you give me, you know, so much strength. You know, so I'm so proud of you and you live your life, you know, on your own terms and that's something that I'm always inspired by. So, wow. She doesn't love that I box, but she loves the fact that I live my life on my terms and I go for my And dreams. she respects that. She does. Yeah, my parents are the same way, so yes. that's amazing. All right. I was thinking about this today. I was watching Set It Off, mm -hmm. one of my favorite hood <laughs> movies. I love a lot of hood movies, okay? So I want to ask you, when you think about the hood movies you like, who is your favorite villain? I really like Lonzo from Training Day, Denzel. Bishop from hey, Juice. I gotta think Two about this. Here we go, here we go. Cleo from Set It Off, Queen Latifah. So we think about like the classic movies. Cleo for sure. Oh, you know, Cleo off. was yes. for sure. Like I they was were, like, they were Cleo. <laughs> they, they were just they, their whole little vibe. Yes, like, I love them. It I know. Ended differently. I'm still salty about that. I ended, know. But, At the end, like yes. Cleo went out like a like a true champ. Like a, yes. <laughs> so I'm going with Cleo. Okay, I'm going. I'm with, for sure going with Cleo. Okay, I'm going with Cleo, Lonzo, and Bishop because I love Tupac because yes, obvious I reason. Love Tupac, but yes, yes, Cleo's but we're gonna, gonna go with Cleo. Yes. Okay. Favorite boxer, male boxer. So there's Sugar Ray so Robinson is Ooh. my favorite of all time. And what he, what is it about him that you just love? His personality, his pizzazz. He's the reason why they made the word paparazzi. Yep. You know, he, yep. he used to train and he paid someone just to come and whistle. I just think <laughs> that everything about what he stood for, how he stood up for, you know, African-American rights at that time, yep. and, you know, how he stood up for pay. He was just a really amazing person. And even from way back then to now, he's still relevant, you oh know? And I just God. think he's an amazing person. And, yeah. And I'm really inspired by his story. Yeah, I really like his story. And I think you dropped some gems too. I don't think some of the things that you said, I don't know if everyone knows that the depth of what you said about him and what he meant to the community and all of that. Yeah. So he stood up for himself, you know, yeah. he did things on his term way back then when it wasn't even a thing. Yeah. So for that, was... I'm forever, you know. Forever for grateful. That. Absolutely. Nice. All right. Well, Raquel, I know you're an athlete. I was a college athlete and I nice. eat, Yeah, I mean, I think people some people know that, but you probably are really careful about what you put into your body. So what's a treat snack for you? Like when you're like, you know what, I gotta eat good. Cupcakes. I, oh my god, I, I make some really <laughs> good. I, I they should make me some. Yes. Okay. So, I love cupcakes. So when do you treat yourself? What kind of cupcakes? Are they chocolate with like vanilla? Break down the cupcake vibe. I like gourmet cupcakes. Like I'm a cupcake snob. They have to be like, you know, <laughs> who's who's cupcakes. But okay. I really like the red velvets, and I really like um, strawberry lemonade type of cupcakes where they kind of fuse them together and where do you get yours and is there a spot my favorite one of my favorites um i like cars cupcakes in san francisco okay um and i like in san diego sprinkles is okay okay car cupcakes is my go-to that's like your standard. that's my when i go to san francisco you're like i'm going to car that's on your list yeah, like I'm i'll see to everybody <laughs> but i gotta get my cupcakes yes, first i'm going to get some cupcakes. i love there's a place called frosted down the street from where i live in long beach and i love it so that's nice. my spot yes. yeah i need to check them out i'm always over there so they are so good all right if you could have a famous actress play you in a movie about your life down the line who would you want 
to play. That's a great question. <laughs> and I don't watch what? a lot of TV, so I don't know. Okay. okay. I have to get back to you on that one. Okay. I need to, like, you need to, like, need to be more averse to, let it, to like, marry. all of the talent. Yes. Yeah, no, there's a lot of great... There's a yes. lot of great talent out there. Absolutely. And there's a lot of powerful women that could play you. So, yeah, we'll, okay, we'll circle back to that. Okay. We'll circle back to that. I have to think. You have to give me some hints. Okay. <laughs> I know oh, they yeah. play, right? Okay. We're on our game. We're on our game. Okay. All right. So, what is your favorite hype music? I had hype music when I was a college athlete. I had hype music when I was on the NFL sidelines for TV. I was bumping. I did a lot of, like, Meek Mill and people uh-huh. like that. Who do you listen to? I, do you, Ace Hood hypes me I, up. Oh, my God. I love her. <laughs> We ball. Close mouth. Yo. Ace <laughs> Hood gets me hype. Like Ace Hood be ready to have me. I love Ace Hood. I, I rock with Ace Hood. That's my Like guy. that's one of my favorite that, hype men. He's so underrated too. Like a lot yes. of people don't know about him. But he's super talented. Yeah. His music is dope. It's like some meaningful music. Like I need a little bit of meaningful <laughs> music. I need something that kind of like resonates with me where I'm like, yes. Like, I love You him. feel what I feel like. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Yeah. He's been, I follow him on Instagram and he's, uh-huh. um, I think he's going to put something new out. I he keeps so. providing these updates. He's like, hey, y'all, I have some setbacks, but I'm still... So he's letting us know he's got something cooking. So I'm just patiently waiting. Yeah, I, I rock. So I'm going to hop on that as soon as it as soon yes. as soon it comes on. All right. Best piece of advice that someone older gave you. So I know how much your mom means to you or like yes. a coach or I know you came to San Diego for your coach and things like that. So maybe something... Best they piece said, of advice. Best piece of advice about life or about boxing that really stuck with you and you're like, yeah. I think the best piece of advice I've ever given is take care of yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup. <gasps> and I think that yes. a lot of times people give, give, give and forget to think about or take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Like get your routine, get you, you know, meditation time or, you know, your walks or your hikes, but stop giving, giving, giving and not keeping something for yourself. Right. And I think a lot of people fall into that where they're just like, you know, on a hamster wheel and then they're just yeah. like draining their own cup. And it's just exactly not... to try to please others. Like, no, like yeah. you're, you're perfect. And how you are, you know, yeah. in the sense of how God created you, what you believe in, you know, as long as you're a good person, you know, your energy's good, your vibe is good, you know, stand in that. Oh, I love that. All right, Raquel, last three. You've been a lot of places. Boxing has taken you to several different places. Yes. I've been to a lot of places, but what's your dream vacation? What's a place? Mine's Dubai because it looks like fire shopping. Once, once coronavirus calms down everything, I'm saying, like, I may hit Dubai at some point. Um, Where do you want to go? It could be anywhere in the world that you feel like. Well, I've been very fortunate to go to a lot of countries. Yeah. I've been to 27 countries. Oh, and love. I think that where I'm, I'm dying to get to now is Iceland or Bora Bora. Ooh, I want to see the Aurora Lights. Like, I, I think I need to see. I'm going to see that in my lifetime. And okay. I think that um, Bora Bora seems really, oh really God. amazing. But Iceland is probably next on my list. Okay, Iceland is pro- uh, next on your list. Okay, I'm yes. going to check in with you on that. I'm going to yes. be like, girl, did yes. you end up going to Iceland? You got to go to Iceland, yes. Okay, so. I love that. So I know that you worked at a law firm, but mm-hmm. if you weren't a boxer and you didn't leave that law firm to become a boxer, what do you think your job would have been? Do you think you would have stayed there? Would you have pursued something else? I would have been a prosecutor or a defense attorney uh-huh. if I didn't love sports. Nice. So I would have probably been in your situation before you started boxing, but what could people see you doing before? So then I really wanted to be an attorney as well. Okay. Like I'm one of those kind of people where I was like, I just love a lot of different things, but I have a nonprofit organization, it's ladiesempower.org. And And I really just feel like um, my calling is really just to inspire the youth to give them something I felt like I didn't have growing up. You know, be it that mentor, that listening voice, um, you know, reasoning voice, listening to you, um, teaching you about credit and, you know, financial independence. Credit is so important. So important. That's one of the first things my dad told I just want to use my gift to inspire others. And I would really just love to be able to mentor young women, you know, have them be a part of my program and just really feel like I'm making my legacy bigger than boxing. It's something that people can always look back on and be like, she really helped me. Wow. I love that. All right. Well, it's time to circle back to the actress question. Okay. So if you had an actress that could play you in a Raquel Miller movie, who would that be? I think her name is Ryan Destiny. Is yes, that right? I, I know who that is. She is just. I like. She I was, like she was her. In, she was in a show that I watched too called Star. Yeah, I like yes. her. So 
I would pick her. Okay, so you yes, pick I'm going with Ryan Destiny. Ryan Destiny, and there's just something about like her spirit and the she's way she's just she dope just to me. I just alive. like her little vibe. I think okay. she's a little beautiful, little star. You know, I just like her. So she is. if I had to kind of circle back and I thought about, it, I'm like, I like her. Oh, okay. probably actually. I just thought of one because I was just thinking of the fact that the Lakers won the championship. Who is your sports team? Who's a team? Like I'm a Bay Area girl. I ride with Warriors. the Bay. I'm a Warriors girl. I'm a 49er you know girl. What I said Lakers. I you were really, like, I really girl. stick to the home okay. soil, but I love, you know. Okay, so I, I Warriors, love, Giants. Yeah, I'm a San Francisco girl. Okay, like, I, I, I stay in my, stay. you know, soil. That's where I stay. Okay. Like, all my teams are okay, so you lose. Don't even come at Raquel Miller with yeah, the team. No. You got to stay Bay Area. But I love LeBron. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely adore okay. LeBron. I like so, LeBron too. So that's I think he's amazing. one. So it's like we stay in our Bay, Bay Area yes. pot, but like LeBron is in there too. LeBron we got is. A I mean, in you know, like I mean, all the Bay yes. Area teams. But I be having LeBron. online fights about LeBron. Okay. He's not on my team, but I just think he's amazing. I used to get into that when he was on the Cavs and I was on Twitter more. I would go back and forth with people that were hating on him. And I'm yes. like, yeah, people hate on the great. I would start. And then I was like, I'm spending too much energy yeah. defending LeBron. Yeah, it's tiring. Like, yeah, let me like chill and take that. But yeah, right. I'd be going to war for LeBron. He's, I like him a lot. I just think that he's an amazing person. I love what he's doing on and off the court. And right. I just think we give him his flowers while he's here. Yes. Well, LeBron yes. is a champ, just like you, Raquel. And thank, well, thank you, you so much for being here. I really appreciate it once again. You driving an hour and a half to be here. Absolutely. I'm so inspired by you as a champ. You're definitely Thank a you. great face for the World Boxing Association, representing the country, USA National Boxing, all the stuff you Thank got you. going. You just have a really humble spirit and you. you just have a never say die, never give up nature that I really relate to. So I just really hope that things continue to grow for you. Thank and you. Grateful for the friendship, grateful for the time. Yes. Any, we shouted out a lot of stuff. We shouted out your nonprofit. We shouted yes, out your so it's power. Like, like, you know. Thank you guys for, you know, checking us out. I'm Raquel Miller. You can check me out on Instagram. Oh, yeah, Insta. Yes, Instagram. I'm under um, MS period Raquel Miller. My clothing brand is the uh, the pbbrand.com. Mm -hmm. The nonprofit organization is ladiesempower.org. You know, mm -hmm. check me out. Follow me. There's going to be some amazing things happening. I'm about to go get that world title. Here we go. World yes, title I'm about in to go the get that building. world title. Absolutely. Well, amazing stuff, Raquel. Thank you, thank you. so much. Thank you, Queen, again. for thank, having thank me. You, thank you, Queen. <laughs> thank you, Queen. And I want to thank yes. you guys so much. Nine million views worldwide. I started awesome. this a couple years ago, interviewed some of the biggest athletes in the world. David Beckham, Kawhi Leonard, Snoop Dogg, T Terrell Damn. Owens. So many players have supported me independently. And I've had so many great players on this couch, just like Raquel right now. So I just feel so blessed to have so much support and it wouldn't be anything without you guys watching. So thank you guys so much. And once again, check out the Bovada brand, www.bovada.lv, play and raise your game. Thank you guys. And we will see you again very, very soon.